Hi everyone, welcome to this GCSE Higher Revision video. The 76 days to go until your first GCSE maths paper. And today we're going to be focusing on the topic of drawn histograms. I've taken histograms and I've split them into two videos. Today we're going to focus on drawn histograms. And tomorrow we're going to focus on reading and interpreting histograms and answer some questions where histograms have been drawn for you. So in terms of drawn histograms, if you've got the revision cards, card number 40 would be really useful for you. And it goes through some of the key information on drawn histograms. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to draw a histogram. I'm going to maybe get you to do some parts yourself. In terms of drawn histograms, it can be quite useful to print out the practice questions in the description below if you can, because then you can actually just do it on the sheet and that'll save you time helping to draw the axes and so on, um, if you can print um, that off. Um, but anyway, let's get started in this day's lesson. We're going to look at drawn histograms, so let's get started. Hi, today we're going to be looking at histograms and we're going to focus on drawn histograms today. So here we've got a group frequency table and histograms are really useful to represent data whenever you've got group data with unequal class widths. So if we have a look here, we've got 0 to 2 seconds, 2 to 4, 4 to 6, 6 to 10, 10 to 14 and 14 to 20. And if you consider how wide the groups are, the class widths, you've got 0 to 2 seconds. So the class width there would be 2 seconds. 2 to 4 seconds, the class width there again is 2 seconds. 4 to 6 seconds, again, the class width is 2 seconds. But if you look at these other classes, from 6 to 10, the class width is 4 seconds, 4 seconds, and then even 6 seconds for that one. So it wouldn't be fair to compare the frequencies as they are. You'd expect higher frequencies in the categories that have got wider groups, but actually that's not necessarily the case. So we have to work out a thing called the frequency density. And I always think back to population density. I always think back to my geography lessons. And I think if I want to work out how packed a country is, it wouldn't be fair to just compare the populations. We need to also take in consideration the size of the country. And then we can work out the population density and then compare and see which one's more packed than others. So what we're going to do is if we want to draw a histogram, we need to work out the frequency density. So the frequency density is calculated by taking the frequency and dividing it by how wide the group is, the class width. So here for this group, the frequency is equal to 10. The class width is equal to 2 because it's too wide. And we're going to do 10 divided by 2. And 10 divided by 2 is equal to 5. So that means the frequency density, the frequency density is equal to 5. Here for the next group, we've got a frequency of 13. So we're going to take that 13 and we're going to divide it by the class width, which is 2. And 13 divided by 2 is equal to 6.5. Next, we've got a frequency of 18, so we're going to do 18 divided by the class width, which is 2, and 18 divided by 2 is equal to 9. Okay, our next group's got a frequency of 16, so the frequency divided by the class width, how wide the class is, the class width is 4, so 16 divided by 4 is equal to 4. Our next group, the frequency is 8, and we're going to divide that by its class width, which is 4, it's 4 wide, so 8 divided by 4 is equal to 2. And finally, we've got a frequency of 6, and we're going to divide it by how wide the group is, which is 6, and 6 divided by 6 is equal to 1. So for each one of the groups, or the classes, we've worked out their frequency densities. So we've got a frequency density of 5, 6.5, 9, 4, 2, and 1. And that's a much fairer way to compare them rather than just looking at the frequencies. Okay, so we've worked out our frequency densities. Now what we're going to do is we're going to draw a histogram. And a histogram is a bit like a bar chart, but obviously it's not a bar chart, it's a histogram. But it's a bit like a bar chart in terms of the fact it's got bars. And each of the bars, it's going to go, the first bar is going to go from 0 to 2 seconds and it's going to hide a 5. So we're going to go from 0 to 2 seconds, which would be here, and it's going to hide a 5. So we're going to go across it from 5 and then down. And that's the first bar. Okay, then for 2 to 4 seconds, it's got a frequency density of 6.5. So we're going to go up to 6.5, which would be there, across to 4, and then down. So that's the second bar drawn. Okay, the next one, it's from 4 to 6, and it's got a frequency density of 9. So from 4 to 6, so we're going to go up to 9. So 9 will be there, across and then down to 6, like so. So we've drawn three of the bars. The next one's from 6 to 10, and it's got a frequency density of 4. So from 6 to 10, so 6 is here, 10's in the middle there, and it's got a frequency density of 4. So it's quite nice, we can just go across and down, like so. Okay, next one, from 10 to 14, it's got a frequency density of 2. So from 10 to 14, it's got a frequency density of 2. So we're going to draw its bar, like so. And finally, from 14 to 20, it's got a frequency density of 1. So from 14, which is here, to 20, which is there, it's got a frequency density of 1. So we're going to go across and down. And that's it. So we've drawn our histogram. And that's it. So that's our histogram. 
Okay, now here's one for you to try. So here we've got our group frequency table. So we've got the mass from 40 to 50 kilograms, from 50 to 60, 60 to 70, 70 to 85, 85 to 100, and 100 to 120. And we've got the frequencies. And it wouldn't be fair to compare these frequencies because some of the classes have only got a class width of 10, whereas some of the other classes have got a class width of 20. So it wouldn't be fair to compare their frequencies. So we need to work out the frequency densities. So can you pause the video now and can you work out the frequency densities? And just remember how how to work out frequency density. Frequency density is found by doing the frequency divided by the class width. So pause the video now and work out all the frequency densities for this frequency table. Okay, so I've added on a column called frequency density, FD, and we're going to take the frequency, which is 4, and we're going to divide it by how wide the class is. So from 40 to 50, it's got a class width of 10. So 4 divided by 10 is 0.4. Okay, next, we've got a frequency of 7, and we're going to divide it by its class width. So from 50 to 60, that's a class width of 10. 7 divided by 10 is 0 0.7. Our next one, the frequency is 13. We're going to divide that by the class width, which is 10. 13 divided by 10 is equal to 1.3. Okay, our next one, the frequency is equal to 12. This time we're not dividing by 10 because the class width is actually 15, so we're going to do 12 divided by 15, which is 0 0.8. Next, we've got 3 is the frequency. We're going to divide that by the class width, which is 15, and 3 divided by 15 is equal to 0 0.2. And finally, we've got a frequency of 3, and we're going to divide it by the class width. The class width here is equal to 20 because it's 20 wide, so 3 divided by 20, and 3 divided by 20 is equal to... 0.15. So we've worked out our frequency densities. Now we just need to label our axes and draw a histogram. So feel free to press pause and to draw this now yourself. Okay, so the first thing we need to do in this question is actually write the scale on the vertical axis. So we've got it labeled as frequency density. And it's very important whenever you're drawing your histogram to label your axis, your vertical axis, frequency density, not frequency, frequency density. And we're going to do our scale going up. Now, our highest value is 1.3. I've tried going up in 0.1s, and there's not actually enough room there. So we're going to have to go up 0.2. So 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0.8. 1, 1.4. So we've gone up to 1.4. I've not gone any further because we only need to go to 1.3. And we're going to draw bars. So let's get our ruler and our pencil. And our first bar is going to go between 40 and 50. And it's got a frequency density of 0 0.4. So 40 up to 0 0.4, across to 50 and down. So that's our first bar. Okay, next one from 50 to 60. It's got a frequency density of 0 0.7. So let's go up to 0 0.7. That's going to be in the middle of 0 0.6 and 0 0.8. So we're going to go in the middle there across and down so we've now drawn two bars our next bar is from 60 to 70 it's got a frequency density of 1.3 so we're going to go up to 1.3 which would be in the middle of 1.2 and 1.4 across and down so that's our third bar it goes between 60 and 70 and has got a height of 1.3 the frequency density is 1.3 okay next bar it's between 70 and 80 and has got a frequency density of 0.8 so let's go to 70 and up to 0.8 and across, and we want to go to 85, so it's going to be halfway between 80 and 90, so 80 and 90, so it's there, and halfway and down, so that's between 70 and 85, and it's got a height of 0 0.8, perfect. Our next one's between 85 and 100, and has got a height of 0 0.2, or a frequency density of 0 0.2, so 85 to 100, and then down, so that's our next one. And our last one's between 100 and 120. So it's going to be between 100 and 120. And it's got a height of 0.15. So we've got our 0 and our 0 0.2. 0 0.1's in the middle. 0 0.15 would be in the middle of that. So it's going to be three quarters of the way up. So there, and across, and then down. And that's it. So we've drawn our histogram. And that's it. And if you drew that yourself, fantastic. And that's it. So in this video, we've looked at how to draw histograms using the fact that frequency density is equal to frequency divided by class width, and using that to work out the frequency densities for each one of the categories, and then that's the height of each bar and draw the histogram. So I really hope you found this video useful. It's quite an important topic, so make sure you're doing the practice questions below, We're focusing just maybe on the practice questions, just the questions that involve drawing histograms today, and then tomorrow, after I've talked about reading and interpreting them, then you can give those a shot. But I really hope you found this video useful. And obviously tomorrow there's going to be 75 days to go into your GCC maths exam. So 3 o'clock tomorrow, the next video will be coming out. If you've been watching these videos from the start, thanks very much. I hope you found them useful. And uh, good luck with your vision. Cheers. Bye.